In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Tanstack DB, which is a hell of a library from Tanstack. It's also a drop in replacement for the famous React query library. Now, we're going to be taking a look at the updates that come with version 0.5. Since the release date of version 1 is already set and it's in less than a month, this is as close as we're getting to the final library, which means that everything that I'm showing you here is probably going to end up in the version one. A few weeks ago, I did make a video comparing TanStackDB and Tanstack Query, And there I talked about two problems that TanStackDB still has that basically stopped me from using it in production. But before we get into that, why should you actually use TanStackDB? Well, TanStackDB is an incremental sync engine. This is basically the front end part of building a sync engine. And no matter what kind of backend do you have, you can simply provide your own implementation of basic CRUD operations like create, read, update, and delete operations. And Tanstack DB takes care of all the rest, which means batching transactions and managing the state internally and synchronizing it with the backend. This saves up a lot of energy, writing up a lot of repetitive code. On top of that, it also provides a world-class user experience, which means that users rarely have to deal with any latency. Every change that is made on your website feels instantaneous. All of that is powered by a powerful algorithm called differential data flow, which is extremely efficient at querying data from large data sets. And I'm talking about extremely large data sets, even more than 50,000 items, which is honestly mind blowing. So does version 0.5 fix the problems that I had with TanStackDB? Is it production ready? Let's figure this out. By the way, if you feel like there are a lot of updates happening inside the TanStack world, then you're not the only one. Actually, there is a lot of stuff happening because the whole community is behind TanStack. It's not just Tanner Linsley working alone on these libraries anymore. And if you don't want to miss any of these updates, then I have something for you. I actually started a newsletter called Tanstack Weekly. And in the newsletter, I just share everything that happened inside the Tanstack world. I have already sent the first release last week and the feedback there has been amazing. Thanks everyone who already subscribed. I'm going to put the link down to the description if you want to subscribe as well. It's free. Check it out. You have nothing to lose. So this is what Tasak TV looks like in production. You have this special hook use live query and here you have your query. So you can define you want to query data from the to do's collection and then you can join data with project collections and you can also have filters. So you're going to filter the to do's where the status is active and here we have a second filter where we are filtering by project ID. So this looks a lot like some kind of database query but the beautiful thing is that all of this gets translated to these beautiful <laughs> API calls. We're talking about slash projects slash one two three which is coming from this filter over here and then the second api call is from to do's. As you can see this is very smart so because we have this filter over here where we're filtering by project ID, we're only going to get one project from the backend. And the other parameters are also passed to the query for the to-dos. So the biggest change in this version is that the queries are actually what drive the collections. Up until now, TanStackDB was not that flexible, which means that you had to sometimes define multiple collections, even though you're working with the same data. But now you can actually work with filters, which means that the filters that you are passing here in your live query are going to arrive on the other side to your collection. I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but let's take a look at what actually changed. And that is how synchronization works. So the first problem that Tasak DB had is that you had to load all the collection at once and then start working on it on the front end. And the change that they've made is that the collection doesn't dictate what data loads your query should do it. And for that, they have introduced synchronization modes, which means that there are three ways how you can synchronize the front end and back end data. Eager mode, which was the default and only mode before version 0.5, which means that you load everything at once to your front end. This is best for the use case that you have less than 10,000 items. On demand mode, here we only load the data that is required for your queries. This is best for extremely large data sets. We're talking about more than 50,000 rows. So now we have literally unlocked a new use case, which is very common. And that is when you don't show all the entries to the user. We're talking about when the user does a search or filters, or maybe even paginates 
between multiple pages of the same database. And that was the first problem that I had with Tensac TV. Why I couldn't use it is that you could not have pagination. And now that is possible, which is awesome. Then there's the third mode, which is progressive mode. And what it means is that your query loads instantaneously and the rest of the data is loaded in the background. And this is very useful if you are building some kind of collaborative software where you want to show the user a part of the UI and then load the rest afterwards. So you're probably already wondering how does the code look like? How do you define a collection and how is it different than before version 0.5? Well, let's take a look at that. So here we are looking at the new way of creating a collection. And what is different here is, first of all, we have this synchronization mode. And this is where you define one of the three synchronization modes that we just talked about. And the second biggest change is this parameter here, context. So before this version, we didn't have a parameter here. And now we have it. And it's full of extremely useful fields. And one of them is context, meta. And inside of it, we have load subset options. And this load subset options object has all the fields that you need. And here we're talking about pagination, filters and more. TensacDB also ships with this uh, helper function parse load subset options that helps you extract all of that information for you. So you can use these parameters to make an API call to your backend. So let's take a look at a real life example. Here we have this query. This is on the component level. So this is the query that we're making inside your React component. And here we are filtering and ordering and we're also setting a limit of 10 items and this is going to be automatically translated to this api request slash api slash products and here as you can see we have category equals electronics price less than 100 you're going to sort by price ascending and limit by 10. and here of course you have this flexibility of formatting these filters or search parameters however suits your backend api now, what I love about TanSacDB is that it's extremely smart. So it doesn't make any kind of unnecessary requests for your backend. For example, if you are working with two queries in two different components that happen to be the same query, then the network call is only going to be done once. This is something that you know from TanSac query, and it's awesome to be able to see it here as well. Another extremely smart thing that happens under the hood is subset matching, which means that if you are loading a part of the collection and then you load a bigger part of that collection that includes a smaller part of that collection that only the missing part is going to be loaded for example if you are loading the first 10 products and then you try to load the first 20 products then only the second part is going to be loaded so this is the api that's going to happen on navigating to the second page which is just awesome another optimization that happens under the hood that you don't have to worry about is join optimization. And that is relevant when you are working with multiple collections and you have a join in between them. And here only the necessary network calls are going to be made. So we're not going to get all the to do's and all the projects and then join them in the front end, but we're already going to filter out the to do's and then use the project IDs that are on these to do's to grab the projects. Now, the second problem that I had with TensacDB in my last video is that I wanted to show how many items I have in my collection. In the example, that was a simple contact book application, and I just wanted to show how many contacts are there for the user. And I simply couldn't find a simple way to do it. I had to get all the contacts and then manually count how many contacts are there. The disadvantage of that is that it was not really efficient, which means that any change made inside these contacts for example, if I changed a contact's name or phone number, it's going to trigger a re-render or the number that I want to show to the users, although that is actually completely unrelated. I just care about the contact count. And I did search a little bit inside the documentation of Tansta Query, and I found this over here, and that is actually the option to group inside queries. So inside your select cause, you can also group items, for example, here by the count. So count user by ID, which is what I would use in my own example. And you can also have, in this case, the average of the user age and obviously all the other functions that you know from your database, like maximum, minimum, sum and stuff like that. So thanks for watching the video. If that's the first time you're watching any one of my videos, please check out my previous uploads. I talk a lot about TensacDB, Start, Router and Query.
Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.